Good afternoon and welcome back to Gulfstream Park and thank you for joining us here on Gulfstream today. I'm Gabby Gaudet, joined by Ron Nicoletti and there's uh, some action going on behind us here. We have the jockey poster signing. Everybody's uh, queued up there trying to get their poster signed. Yeah, if you're at the track and you can look and see us, find the walking ring and come and get a beautiful poster sign uh, with uh, Pegasus, I yeah. think is in the background this year. Pegasus and the uh, Jockey Colony as well. So uh, that's uh, available there behind us for the next uh, however long, couple of uh, minutes or so. So make sure you get out there and uh, get your poster signed. But we have a lot of action today. We have 13 races on tap once again. A big, big carry over there in the Rainbow Six, and we do have that mandatory payout a week from today. So a lot of stuff going on and some nice stakes action, too. Yeah, during the day yesterday, the Rainbow Six was over $4 million. Of course, 70% is given back because someone didn't hit it, so it's going to be well over that again today. And we'll take a look now at our featured wagers and our carryovers because we have a lot of ground to cover, 13 Ooh. races to cover. And it starts all off in race one, that rolling super high five, just shy of $7,000. Expect that to be heavily bet. It is kind of a wide open field to start us off, so definitely a fun bet to take part in early. And we do have that 50 cent early pick five, races one through five on this 13 race program, the 20 cent rainbow six. Starts in race eight, $3.6 million. We saw it get over $4 million yesterday. So dive on into that action. Start handicapping early because it's not an easy sequence. But if it is not hit, we will have a mandatory payout next Saturday, March 26th. So a lot to look forward to as well. And in race nine on these 13 race program, 50 cent late pick five does kick off as well. You took a look at the early and the late pick five, so I guess we'll start it off with the early pick five. Yeah, and I went a little different way today when you'll see my ticket pop up. I actually singled a horse in this first race, the two bolt hole making its debut on the turf. Took all in the second race. I thought it was a wide open affair. Too deep, too deep, too deep. $36 ticket. I get four out of five, so I figured let me change up how I'm doing this. I couldn't make any sense of the second race. It was so wide open for me, so I took all of them in there. Maybe I get a 100 to one shot come in and um, pay my ticket off very nice. But I need this horse in the opener to uh, take to the turf. I like it. It's an aggressive strategy. Clicking that all button in race two, I'm in full agreement with you. That second race is a, a head scratcher. I think maybe <laughs> five or six <laughs> different horses. That whole field would <laughs> probably win that race. Um, so that'll be a fun race. But we'll start it off with the first race. And uh, the two, Bolt Hall. Uh, this is a horse for the Todd Fletcher Barn who was this is a key race throughout the meet we saw kelly tough come out of that race to go on and win a maiden special weight stretching out to a mile and an eighth we saw star hill went out of that race went on to be third in the tampa bay derby so that's a key dirt race that kind of the whole meet has been centered on now this horse goes to turf kind of a, a questionable move and I, I thought that uh, he obviously has a lot of talent on the main track and perhaps uh, the connections think he has more talent on the turf uh, and uh, you know i couldn't find an absolute reason usually you can look at a horse and say well he wasn't running that well on the main track let's try him on the turf that's not the case here and, and i just got the feeling i was enamored with his races on the main track so i'm using him on the turf today and he is a second choice up there early on with another todd fletcher horse in that race and i believe you have a you found a Oh, yeah, I wanted to show you that. Hall. Yeah, I'm Boat Hall. I'm going to show you that right now. This is Todd Pletcher over five years. Not a very big sampling. He's two for 19, 11%, uh, four for 21% uh, in, in the money, but only $1.65 ROA. This is a maiden winner, last out, going from the turf to the dirt. So he doesn't do it that often. Dirt to turf. Dirt, dirt to yeah. turf, excuse me. He doesn't do it that often, so uh, we'll see how that plays out. Just something we wanted to show you. And he is by Scat Daddy, so he does have a little bit of that turf pedigree on the bottom side. The mare's one win was on the dirt, so some food for thought. But if you're looking to beat that horse, there are some other options. The four and bridal daddy, another one by Scat Daddy, out of that essence of Dubai uh, mare. And we haven't seen this horse since early October, last seen in the grade three bourbon over that yielding going. And I simply think uh, he might have been a little bit outclassed. We saw the performance that Air Force did put in, and uh, there were a lot of horses that just didn't like that Keeneland surface. There are horses that liked the Saratoga, that firm course at Saratoga, and just didn't transition their form to that yielding course. You know, uh, you know, I'm going with the two single, but you know, if you have a chance to spread, you got to use these two horses on your ticket. 
Uh, yes. That we took first two we talked about. You have to. And not to mention, Unbridled Daddy did get into a little bit of trouble in the bourbon. He actually uh, has had a lot of trouble in several of his starts. So I thought he kind of uh, was uh, kind of hold the class lines in here in a field of unknowns. And he is taking that early money. But beyond that here, the seven mystic sky was one for Bill Mott. And you could easily look at his last race and say, okay, he faced restricted made in special weight company. But I even thought he had excuses in the race prior again regular made in special weight company and we actually saw that race to be pretty key as second mate came back to win and uh, getting an 85 buyer speed figure for that victory so that race held up pretty well yeah and I just threw in the line I want to say it real good now a Geldy makes his first start he disputed the face what a pace what I like about it, he finished the weakening fourth behind Converge who went on to win the grade three Palm Beach in his next start and in front of a horse called don't be shy he won the display at Woodbine in his next race so it was a pretty good race I threw that one on the ticket at a little bit of a price and and you should throw that ticket on the bottom, or <laughs> throw that horse on the bottom of your ticket. I have him picked fourth in here. The, the only thing that kind of swayed me was um, uh, Rob Roboto uh, over the past five years with these types of layoffs on the turf is 0 for 23. So sometimes it takes a, a race or two for them to find the winner circle, but he does have the back credentials to really deliver in that race. We'll move on to the second, though. And this is that wide open race that you decided to click the all button. And I can't blame you. And uh, it we're probably all over the map as we are here. The six left coast pier just is the one that you opt for coming out of a second place performance last yeah, night. Yeah, he's turning back to seven eights. He set a pressure pace. He got beat a neck versus similar going a mile. So I went with him on top. Uh, the horse I have in second, you have on top. And that's the, the three dance of freedom. I thought they could just go with this horse. Uh, the blinkers do go back on when the blinkers were on. He was facing a uh, slightly better company, that 16,000 condition for nine winners of two. And this is a, a field where you have a horse like the two indie artists who's one for 22 on a fast main track. You have a couple who are O for whatever on a fast main track. But the three dance of freedom, he's only had four starts on a fast main track and a second and a third. So I thought there was a little bit more upside to him. Luis Sia is back in the saddle, and I hope they just use his natural speed to his advantage. Yeah, and I threw it I threw in the four forest warrior, but I was, it was a wide open affair, so that's why I did that all button. I don't know how it's going to work out. Usually when I do that, the favorite wins. Yeah, it, it always <laughs> happens, doesn't it? I, it? The longest shot on the board never wins when you click the <laughs> all button. Uh, the five Leonidas de Roma was one I'll just use. I know this horse is a long time maiden, but he's actually coming out of some pretty decent for level maiden claimers, as we've seen some horses kind of exit and go on to win that non-winners of two condition immediately after that. So a tough race. Don't blame you with the all button. The third race, though, another kind of head scratcher, an open 6,250 condition, seven furlongs on the main track. But you and I both agree with the seven helper, Rye. He was very, very strong last He's out. stretching out the seven furlongs. He's a three-time winner at the distance, so I like that right away. He drew away in a notch his second consecutive victory. He defe defeated similar going three quarters of a mile. It's Apprentice John. John Cruz, who's going for the hat trick with this horse. So I uh, put him on top with the nine, Duncan Bend in second, and El Kraken in third. And Duncan Bend and Helper Rye, they face each other last out. And you can see in the short comment of Duncan Bend uh, was checked at the eighth pole. And I didn't think it really had an impact on the outcome of the race. We saw Helper Rye just kind of shot out of the cannon at the top of the stretch, and whereas Duncan Bend looked like he was leveling out. So it concerns me, Duncan Bend now stretching out to the seven furlongs, whereas I think it's a benefit to the seven Helper Rye. Yeah, so uh, I mean, he looks like the one to beat in there, Helper Rye. The four fastidious son was one I just through on the bottom of the ticket is two for three at this particular distance the blinkers go on he doesn't have a lot of speed but i do think that if he gets a uh, going at the top of the stretch he could be one to pick up the pieces a race four on the card a maiden seventy-five thousand dollar event seven and a half furlongs onto the turf course and uh it, this one i think you could go in multiple different directions the six franklin towers though is one that you opt for yeah, Franklin Towers is turning back in distance after returning from a five-month layoff. He went up, he chased the pace, he finished what I thought was a screw-tightening fifth against this caliber competition, going a mile in the 16th, Jane Sabelli, Paco Lopez atop this son of City Zip. I'm expecting this horse to be uh, up near on the lead, and I like the way the, tr uh, the horse runs on a course that's been favoring this type of runner. 
and uh, the 10 czar tax was one that I liked last time out, and I can remember wanting to see this horse get to the turf. The Connections wanted to see this horse get to the turf and debut. It was unfortunately rained off. They've given him some time since then, is listed as a first-time gelding, but on the bottom side, he is out of that St. Bayado mare, and is actually makes him a half to a horse that I'm familiar with, Beantown Saint. He's a very, very nice turf sprinter. He's very fast too. And uh, you see kind of on the on the bottom side, there's some really nice breeding actually in the bloodlines. Twice the vice is on the bloodlines in the bottom side, a $1.4 million earner, very, very nice uh, mare. So now I got to stick with him. If I liked him last time out and he didn't get to the turf, today he finally gets to the turf. And he's getting there with blinkers and Lasix too. So yes. they're adding a couple of things on that horse. And Johnny Velasquez stays aboard. I think that is also a positive there, at least a little bit of a vote of confidence. The nine swing hard is one, another one out of a St. Biota mare by hard spun, a high price purchase. Um, the mare was very nice, but she actually never started on the turf. Yeah, and I just thought, you know, the uh, connections uh, trainer Jimmy Jerkins uh, with getting LASIK, Eddie Castro. Uh, I think you watch the tote action on this horse if you possibly can and see if, uh, you know, it's it's a hot number on, on the board and maybe use it on your ticket. Okay, you ready to get to some stakes action? The Any Limit, six furlongs onto the main track. And a small but potent field. We do have the three Ballet Diva coming in here. But nine to five on the morning line is Karen. I love that name. <laughs> we'll go back. Very simple. <laughs> Karen. I like when horses are named after people. I think it's funny. Like Steve. <laughs> We've been familiar buddy with Steve, Steve here. <laughs> We'll see, we'll take a look at uh, the most recent performance from Karen. This was up at Woodbine. And uh, she seems like kind of a, a quirky little filly. She uh, was obviously in, in hand here. She got away with very slow fractions there, 48 flat for the half, and then just continued to go on from there, kind of stole that race on the lead. You can see here swishing her tail with a couple of taps um, on the on the right side. She looks like she's even switching leads a little bit. So she's just winning this on pure talent alone. Now the biggest question is, can she take a liking to the main track? She's never been on a traditional dirt surface. And reading some of the press releases, the connections, the goal is to go to the Canadian Oaks later this summer. So this is just kind of a prep race. And I think it's a good move because it opens the door to other opportunities if she does like the and dirt. they're going to have a new uh, surface up there at Woodbine when she gets back. It'll be Tepeta. But I found a stat, and it's a very limited stat, but it's a pretty good one. And that comes on Karen. Mike DiPaolo, over the five years, he's one for two, 50%, 100% of the money, two for two with a 5.15 ROL. You're saying why? It's synthetic to dirt, non-graded stakes over the last five years. There was two horses that ran. One of them was Nothing Back Bear, who finished second at Keeneland in the juvenile dirt sprint. And going back a few years, it was Penda Harbor, who won the 500 hundred thousand dollar uh, Prince of Wales uh, at uh, uh, up in Canada so I just thought that was an interesting stat to show that he's done it twice he's one with one and a second with the other beat and a half length and uh, looking at some of the breeding though she is by society's chairman so a little bit of turf pedigree but she f faced the likes of uh, catch a glimpse there uh, in the Natalma the back in uh, September so she's a versatile filly and I think one to respect but the th she's going to have to face the wrath of the three ballet diva who has recency who has speed and is getting a slight class relief from the previous efforts that she's faced. Yeah she's cut back to three quarters after a couple of worthy efforts uh, going along in which she was a distant third behind the horse that impressed us unbelievably, and that's Catherine Sophia. That was in the forward gal, grade two, and to set the pace week and forth, that was in the six and a half furlong Margate, Stanley Gold, strong front running jock, Jose Caraballo and the Irons, lots to like about it, put it on top of my ticket. Don't know what to do with Karen, I mean, I put it second, but this horse, uh, now that you say it's a prep, uh, uh, not, you know, I, I think she's good enough to win in this spot, but. It's, it's a very cool race indeed. We'll move on to the sixth, though, an open $16,000 uh, turf event, seven and a half furlongs out there, and another wide open field. We've got a full field of 12 runners. Yeah, I went with the eight Saffron Horling. They'd moved to the Marcial Navarabon via the claim, turning back to seven and a half after rallying to finish third, beating a half length against similar going nine furlongs. Eddie Castro rides. So I just threw this one on top of the ticket. Don't know what he's on the morning line. He's actually the morning line favorite. At three to one. And uh, again, I think you have to proceed with a little bit of caution uh, with anybody claiming out of the Mike Maker barn because he just does a ph phenomenal job right. with his turf runners. Um, but the connections, uh, Marcial 
Marcia Navarro do very, very well off the claim, too. So I think that's a positive. And this horse, I thought, was it should have won last time out. He unfortunately had to go extremely wide in that final turn and uh, was probably the best horse in the race. So one to respect, I use him second. I'm trying to beat him with the one golden ribbit who's dropping in class and now getting back to a firmer going. I, this horse used to have a lot of speed, and I'm wondering if that's going to resurface here today. Last time out, he was a big, big price, but again, facing uh, lesser company, we saw Quiet Force. He actually came back to win, I believe, first off the claim for Peter Walder the other day, an open $50,000 race. We saw Gunderson come back and win for open 30 condition. So this is just a little bit of a price, maybe one to shake things up. The six hidden vow is one that you have to respect Javier Castellano now in the saddle. There are so many ways to go in this it race. It really is. And, you know, one other horse I'd use real quick, the nine, one more cat is another cutting back in distance. Uh, finished behind Saffron Hall last time out. It's trained by George Navarro. So you got dueling brothers here. Edgar Zayas in the saddle today. As you said, wide open affair. Yes, <laughs> race seven, though, a maiden 12,500 event, five and a half furlongs onto the main track. We have a couple of first time starters, which always makes these low level claimers even trickier, but we both land on the same horse, and that is the class dropper, the 10 unknown. And that's the reason he's dropping to this 12 5 level, turning back to five and a half furlongs. He chased the pace along the inside. He finished second. It was a distant second, what is against better 25. To me, looked like the one that uh, you certainly have to have on your ticket. Uh, well, with a first time started jump up, who knows? But this horse looks on paper as the one to be. And she's getting a big class relief. Last time out, she had a face the likes of Light R. Way, who was a first time starter for trainer George Navarro, heavily bet there for that maiden 25. She just drew away from the field. She came back to run a mediocre third against Open Company in her subsequent start. And this is, I don't think this is a sus suspicious class dropper whatsoever. And, uh, is well meant here but beyond that the 12 live by the river i like her a little bit yes she's going to have to work out a trip from that outside post but paco lopez aboard and i like the cutback she looks like kind of a one run sprinter and i'm hoping she can maybe uh be a little bit more comfortable stalking from off the pace as she was going backwards at seven eights last time and we both used baby antonella on the tickets turning back to five now she broke a little outward at the start finished a disappointing seventh last time out of going three panels i think she runs better with a clean break all right, that's races one through seven. The Rainbow Six starts in race eight today, and we've got a big carryover. I'll talk through the ticket. It's a very tough sequence. No single today. I'm very sorry, but we'll talk about it right after this commercial break. Welcome back to Gulfstream today. Now looking at the Rainbow Six, we do have a whopping $3.6 million carryover today. We saw the pools get up to over $4 million yesterday. That was five out of six yesterday. I did. I, I lost in the last <laughs> leg. That's the worst case scenario when you lose in the last race. But I did only have two horses in there, and I believe it was won by a big uh, 36 to one shot. Yeah, $73 or yeah. something. It seems to happen every day lately. I had a long <laughs> shot, but it finished in the latter half of the field and not the <laughs> upper half of the field, unfortunately. But race eight does start us off, and we'll see that ticket here now. And uh, just using two horses to start us off, I really did like uh, Conquest Sandman. Unfortunately, he is scratched out of this race. So just using the seven and the ten, Todd Fletcher's horse looks to be very tough in here. So hopefully he can deliver there in the first leg. Using four horses in the next three in the next two, just using two horses in race 12, one of our feature races of the day, the grade two inside information with Stone Tastic and my long shot Kiss to Remember. And as we get to the final leg of the sequence, 248 to cap it off. I know it's an expensive ticket, but there's uh, $3.6 million on the line. Hey, you got to be in it to win it. You got to spend <laughs> some bucks to get some bucks. Exactly. <laughs> so race eight does start us off. Um, nice maiden special weight. And we'll talk about the 10, who's your drama here uh, for Todd Pletcher. They debuted this horse at the maiden $50,000 level. 
it was a very, very strong race. Yeah. The number came up strong, and it gave them the confidence enough to step him up to maiden special weight last Yeah, time. you know, he was game of defeat. He was beating the neck, but by, well, who was he beating by a horse that we really liked, and, and that was Inspector Lindley at this level and distance last time out. Todd Pletcher, Javier Castellano, gelded son of big drama. I think that uh, that horse, Inspector Lindley, all the horses that have come out of that race have run well. Even if they didn't win, they've run well, and I expect Inspector Lindley to be stakes caliber down the line. I agree, and he, he does look like a horse that needs a little bit of pace to run behind, and he should get just that in this race with the two, Hanavi. Uh, we also have some speed from the seven, Hint of Roses, and, of course, the nine, Super Stan in here. Uh, so he should get a lively pace. He's the horse that I'll use. Unfortunately, the 12 was a scratch, but the seven, Hint of Roses, you also use in here. And perhaps the turf is a little bit more conducive to his running style than it was when he last ran. Yeah, he's cutting back to the smile on the 16. He made that middle move to get the lead before tiring to finish fourth. It was a really solid maiden test on January 3rd, 23rd. It was won by that horse Gimlet that I thought was a pretty nice performance. So, uh, uh, yeah, we know we're in agreement with our top two selections here. The top three selections yeah. in the six conquest. Porta Ponte. I have to make sure I say <laughs> that correctly on the bottom side. The mare was a dirt sprinter and she was pretty speedy. She actually won four out of 12 races, just about $90,000. There's some nice breeding on the bottom side and it's hard to overlook that nice bullet work out there on the 5th of March. Yeah, just one little note. The jockey the trainer standings of Mark Cassie and Julian Lepper are winning races here at a 28% clip. This yeah. is the one they kept in the race. Scratch the 12 put the six in with Julian Leparou in that, the saddle. That one might, uh, <laughs> <laughs> leaving that horse out of my pick six might be to my own peril, but <laughs> we will try to muster through uh, the, the first leg of the sequence. Race nine does kick off the 50 cent late pick five. You have a ticket. Any singles? Yes. Oh, okay. Let's Stone see it. Stonetastic is my single. Okay. We'll show you it here. All right. Let's so there you <laughs> go. One, three, four, six, seven, eight, two, four. There's the eight stone tastic in the feature race of the afternoon. <laughs> and I went five deep in the last race. And now uh, you see the 13. That's a horse getting off the also's uh, that uh, Javier Castellano will ride. So I added that one at the end. It's a $45 ticket. I need stone tastic. I was so impressed with that horse's race last time out. After trouble, two starts back. Uh, I, you know, I figured this horse is just in great form. Trained by Kelly Breen. And I just think he can run well today. So uh, that's my single in that race. Okay, in uh, race nine. Uh, this was a, a tricky race, too. We have um, a couple different horses in here. You land on the three, Direct Message, who... I've heard Tom Albatroni, this is the horse to beat. Last time out was beaten by Gettysburg, had Lasix for the first time, but you see Gift Box, a nice horse in the running lines, Matt King Cole, who's pointing towards the wood, uh, who also won recently an allowance race, a really promising Linda Rice horse. So yes, he is the horse to beat. I didn't use him in my top three, but I did use him in the pick six. Yeah, and, uh, and you know, I, it, as you said, looks like the one to beat the addition of Lasix. Uh, uh, you know, he did, ran well. He got the Lasix, he ran well. I'm expecting him to run well again today. Louis I as in the saddle. The one singleton, I'm uh, not singling, but <laughs> I do like him. And last time out, I thought he his uh, hand was a little forced in that race because he s clearly looks like a horse that has a little bit of uh, talent. And he was um, tapped a little bit slightly at the start. I thought he was in a hard place to be, pressing on the outside, contesting the likes of Sharp Azteca, who was a very uh, promising uh, a George Navarro horse. He, the barn thinks really highly of him. He had to run against Zulu in the sub in the uh, start prior to that. So I'm thinking now at a mile and an eighth, they're just going to go from the rail, get aggressive with this horse, and hopefully it'll be all said and done. Yeah, MSC El Jaramillo in the saddle for Nicky Zito. So a, a horse I had to have on my ticket too. The four heck of a shot is one you used to now stretching out in distance. Yeah, he's stretching out to a mile and an eighth. They're, they're much needed. Uh, six furlong day, uh, career debut. He bumped at the start. He finished fourth. It's Todd Pletcher. Johnny Velasquez, $240,000 son of Trap Shot, who has uh, certainly bred to respond favorably to this distance. Uh, one final horse I wanted to talk about who I threw into the exacta, uh, Javier Castellano aboard here, the nine stockyard. And we have a statistic for Todd Pletcher with these types of horses over the past five years uh, going a route of ground, turf to dirt with maiden special weight horses. Um, he's 29% and still a positive ROI, 73% in the money. He's good going turf to dirt. He's way better yeah. going turf to dirt than dirt to turf. But not that he's not bad either way. <laughs> yeah, not bad either way. <laughs> well, a lot of the times, uh, you know, we see... Uh, 
and, and I'm not talking about just Todd, but right. a lot of trainers where they think if a horse is uh, has a lot of potential or doesn't have a lot of potential, they start them on the turf. And I think it's a positive move, moving horses to, to the dirt. Yeah, and um, yeah, because they're tougher fields, obviously. Well, he does an excellent job doing just that. He does. Race 10 on the card, a two other than allowance, optional claimer, a mile on the main track, a, scra a couple scratches in here, and the eight chip it is one again for trainer Todd Pletcher last time out had uh, ran against squadron a and they have to come back and face each other today and you know chip it I gave a little bit of the edge because he was coming back from a, an a, almost eight month layup to finish that fast closing third oh we Don't do we have a replay oh we do have a replay yeah that's let's right go, let's, let's go take watch. a look at squadron a and uh chip it and you can talk about the race well, well <laughs> yeah, you'll see what happened here I just thought that you know chip it coming back from the almost eight month layup he was a fast closing third you'll see him coming here and it just ran very well in that race. Squadron A, of course, in great form right now, who finished in front of Chippet in this race. Yes, he did. And he, Chip, or excuse me, Squadron A, I thought had to have a little bit more of a, a trip there. He had to kind of squeeze in between horses. He was closing from off the pace. I overall thought it was a tougher race for the four toasting master, and I really liked him as a long shot, but he is out of this race. Squadron A, though, there are a couple questions with him. He has been very consistent, but is there a reason that why he's only two for 24? And uh, he has not won uh, in 11 races dating back to March 2000. 2014. Another thing, the reason I went with Shepard, if you look at Squadron A, he said three previous races at the distance, no wins, a second and a third. Looks like he's there. I don't know if he wants to go over the top and get the victory, so I went 8-7. And what about top filling? There was a time where this horse, there was so much hype on this horse when he first started out his career, potentially going to the Kentucky Derby. Unfortunately, we all know that that So you're just hoping that this horse comes back and shows a glimpse of what he did in the past. He was always one of my favorites, right. so I'm really excited to see him come back. If you look at the pace scenario, though, uh, more applause now stretching out in distance should be forwardly placed, and J.S. Bach is going to be close, so perhaps the pace will come back to him, or maybe this is just a race that they, a nice light race to bring him back off the shelf and then point him for yeah. other races later yeah. on down the road. We'll move on to the 11th race, a spectacular bid, and um, six and a half furlongs there onto the main track. We'll take a look at Tiger Blood and go back to Tampa. Well, there's a lot of horses <laughs> coming out of Tampa, pretty much all of them here. <laughs> and Tiger Blood is one. We'll just look at his uh, stretch run because it was it was very impressive. He was super impressive in debut when he got a 91 buyer speed figure. He would come back and kind of tone it down a little bit. And he just drew off from the rest of the field. He's under a couple encouragements, left-hand uh, drive, but he is just under a full-on drive, and he did this off of talent. He kind of, is he the real deal, though, is the question. We get to the acid test today. That's what you got to say. You know, he's got those two victories that are very nice. He makes the stakes debut. He reeled back-to-back -back victories, open lent victories. We'll see how it goes. But uh, you see his performance there. But I did go with the number four morning fire. He won the seven furlong Pasco at Tampa. Turning back to six and a half. He went up. He set the pace. He weakened to finish third behind. Next out, grade two Tampa Bay Derby winner. Destin, that was in the grade three mile in the 16th, Sam Davis. I think this distance hits this one right in the eye, and I put it on top of my ticket. I mean, it's no great shakes. I don't know if he's the morning line favorite or not, and he is. And, and the two, two Tiger Blood, for all the reasons we mentioned and showed, Yes, and uh, Morning Fire, look, he has a lot of speed. He has a, he's a horse with a lot of talent. I think they ran him in the Sam Davis thinking, well, does this horse, is this a horse potentially to, you know, stretch out in distance? What are some of the options with him? They entered him in the Tampa Bay Derby. They scratch out of that and committing to one-turn distances. So I, I like that. I like the fact that they cut him back because he looks like he prefers one-turn distances, whereas obviously the horses who beat him in the Sam F. Davis Dustin, a potential derby contender for Todd Pletcher. Tiger Blood, though, just going back to him quickly, because the pace scenario is all over the place right. in here. We have Morning Fire, who's fast. Tiger Blood, who's fast. Have a couple of horses, too. Uh, John Q. Public, he's very fast, too. 
Tiger Blood was actually tried to rate on the backside, and he was just too <laughs> good for the rest <laughs> of the field. So I wouldn't be surprised if he shows a rating gear today. Whether or no. not that's going to pan out to his favor is a question. Yeah, and that's why uh, quickly I threw the seven epic journey on the ticket. He's turning back, covered from a bumping. I think he might be able to carve out a, a trip about behind, uh, you know, Morning Fire. He was in that race in the seven furlong Pasco with him. Just a horse to hit the board I had. And the eight, Dan, the go-to man I use because I just think he fits the flow of the race a little bit better today. He was uh, second behind at work who would come back to be second in the Tampa Bay Derby as well and now second time off the layoff Javier Castellano and the pace dynamic really sets up for yeah. him he's going to be sitting in the catbird seat I would imagine a race 12 our feature race of the day the grade two inside information and stone tastic super super impressive we'll show that replay in the miami shores actually when she pretty much just romped yeah it was, uh, it was over right at the start you know she just cruises home you'll see it now as they uh start the video up and just uh you know this was after having trouble you know in its race before rough trip in the grade three sugar swirl this is a jog in the park right now you see eased up at the wire kelly breen paco lopez that's a daughter of Miz and mast and she's been training really <laughs> really well since since then, and I can't blame you for singling her in the big six. Look at her. She, that, was, <laughs> that was just an absolute walkover, and she is one that when she breaks well, there's there's nothing you can do. She's she's probably going to be the winner, but she didn't break well in the sugar swirl. That gave best behavior the advantage to go to the lead, and uh, Stonetastic, is she multidimensional? Does she have to be today? These are some of the questions. We do have the likes of Flutterby, who's, who's pretty fast in her own right. Uh, best behavior could pressure the pace, too. So there's a, a little bit of pace in here, but she is probably the fastest early at 7-8. I want to hear about your long shot, and that's the nine. Kiss to remember. Well, and that that's the thing. If um, uh, I think we have, yeah, we, we have, have a, a replay. Video, yeah. yeah, let's go back to Kiss to remember, and I believe this is on uh, a couple starts back there in the grade one ballerina when she was second behind Unbridled Forever. And this is a Philly, or mare now, I should say, Ha who has a lot of talent, Ron. You look at the class lines that she was running in, she, the uh, connections thought highly enough of her to go to the Breeders' Cup with her. She ran a really good race behind Taurus, who we'll see run this afternoon. And she was just grinding out a run behind a very, very nice horse and, and bridled forever. And yeah, she's gonna need things to go her way today. There's going to be a very lively pace and maybe she's gonna need a race off of the shelf, but she's good at the seven eights. She's got back class and why not? And Julian Leperu, who handles this type of runner perfectly, uh, even though he's been win mo winning most of his races lately on the front end on the turf, Julian uh, definitely can help this horse. Ten to one on the morning line. And it's the same reason why you probably like the two you bought her, because yeah. she's going to be closing yeah. from off the pace. Yeah, well, she was beating the neck in this race last year. She's stretching out to one of our most accomplished distance. Ten starts, four wins. She drew off to win the six furlong minaret at Tampa Bay by four plus slants. But you look at her running style, like you said, fits this race shape perfectly. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll move on to the 13th and final race of the card. Seven and a half furlongs on the turf, a maiden $35,000 race. And I have a little bit of a sneaky horse here, but uh, a, a pretty wide open race. The 13 Irish Major does draw in off the also eligible. And Javier Castellano uh, leaves the four diploma and goes to the 13 Irish Major. Yeah, and uh, on the four diploma will be Julian Leperu. But I did go with the six in here. You have in second Ransack wheeling back. Same level and distance with the perfect stalking style needed to capitalize what I see on paper to be a solid early pace scenario. Uh, Todd Pletcher, Luis Saez in the saddle. Yes, and I have nothing against his <laughs> last performance. I really don't. Uh, he was caught in a tough chasing position the entire way around there behind McFly, who wired the field. And there's no negatives about that performance. So I'm using him in the pick six. I respect him uh, for all those reasons you mentioned, too. But the two My Bucky's boy debuted uh, against Maiden $50,000 company. And I thought, okay, it was a bad performance. He didn't really pick up his feet, but he is by Bellamy Road out of that theatrical mare. The mare was a $100,000 earner, grade three placed on the turf. She was very nice, and she actually did produce a three-time turf winner. So Eddie pleases. He's very sharp with these turf sprinters, especially turf sprinters who are uh, maidens and maiden claiming level. So 15 to 1, I'm willing to take my shot. Well, uh, your last couple of days, if uh, there's anything to go by that, the last race has always been bombers. So maybe yeah. that's the way to go in the, the nightcap each and every day. So good pick by, good pick by you.
the four diploma though last but not you throw this uh, Philly or this Colt excuse me into the mix as well I think one that could improve off his last race. yeah this one is hoping to graduate at the $35,000 level after shipping it from Churchill to run useful seventh year 50 maidens Eddie at uh, Keneally now Julian Leperu atop the son of Harlan's holiday I'll throw in the eight there on the bottom of the ticket for Peter Walder, who showed speed going a mile and a 16th. I like the cutback here, and they put blinkers on him for the first time last time out. So Johnny Velasquez aboard. I think uh, they should go. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the races 1 <laughs> through 13. And with this 13 race program, the 20 race through the 20 cent Rainbow Six starts in uh, race 8, 3.64 million dollar carryover. Hard to say that, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it's, it's getting up there. It's, it continues to grow there. And uh, uh, once again, a reminder we do have a carryover in the first race in that rolling super high five. We finished on time. We did a lot of talking, 13 races, and right on time. <laughs> not a lot of minutes. And we're going to go find Larry Colmas so he can give you the scratches and changes. But with that said, best of luck on today's card. And thank you once again for joining us here on Golf Stream Today. Our day begins early. Preparing for the task ahead.